The following is a presentation of the Redskins Broadcast Network. Welcome to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael here at Redskins Park. Each week, Redskins Chronicles will take an in-depth look at a piece of this team's storied legacy, and today, a very unique guest, one of the original Hogs, former Redskins offensive lineman Ron Saul joins us in just a few moments. But before we hear from Ron, next up for the Redskins, Sunday at FedEx Field, a 1 o'clock matchup with the Detroit Lions. The Redskins coming off a loss at Green Bay. They are 0-2. Detroit fell in Arizona. They are 1-1. For the Redskins, looking to bounce back, as I said, you know, everyone knew one of the keys to the game in Green Bay was stopping the outstanding quarterback for the Packers, Aaron Rodgers. It didn't happen. Here are the highlights brought to you by Ameritel. Takes a snap. He's got time. Time breaks down. Kerrigan's got him. A sack back to the 21-yard line. Back to pass. Rodgers pumps. He's going to get hit. He's sacked again by Ryan Kerrigan. Back-to-back -back sacks by 91. Looking, looking, dumps it a little, it is caught by Cobb. Inside the 15-10-5, touchdown Green Bay on a fourth down. Green Bay gets six. And no safeties back. Secondary is empty back there. Rodgers takes, fires to the middle, it is caught by Nelson, it's a touchdown. Give me Chase Arakpo, throws into the end zone, it is caught, a touchdown. Jermichael Finley and the Packers extend their lead to 23-0. Tosses it out, wide open James Jones at the five and doesn't get to the pylon. It looks like he, he might have fumbled it. He, he fumbled it. it, it's gonna be a touchback. Rodgers takes a snap, heat off the edge. Here comes Josh Wilson on the blitz from the corner. He takes him down, another sack for the Redskins. That's the fourth sack of this game. Jones to the left, Rodgers pumps, going end zone, and it is caught. Jordy Nesson, the right side of the end zone, beating the safety, Bakari Rambo, and the Packers extend the lead, 30 to nothing. Going to pitch it off to the left. Alfred Morris bobbles it, gathers it, running across the 20. 25 breaks a tackle to the 30. 35 to the 40, up to the 45-yard line. All the way to the 50-yard line, Alfred Morris. Hankerson is to the right. Roy Halou's in the backfield. Robert takes a snap under heat. Throws it out to the left. It's caught right at the pylon. And it is a Redskins touchdown. And no, steps out of bounds at the... Inside the one, he's inches away. Catch made by Garcon. And he throws the flag. He throws the flag. So they'll go under the hood. Yeah, that's definitely yeah, he a touchdown. reaches his hand out and, and gets it. From Green Bay's two-yard line, Robert takes a snap. Looking. Not much time. Fires to the middle. Caught Jordan Reed. Touchdown. Touchdown, Redskins. Robert, the shotgun takes. Going to the right corner of the end zone. Caught Santana Moss. And that's going to do it. Disappointing afternoon here at Lambeau Field. Final score, the Packers defeat the Redskins 38-20. That's how it went in Green Bay, and for the Redskins offense, they need to get the ball in the end zone in the first half of these football games, and they need to convert third downs. Here's Robert Griff from the third. He met the media earlier this week, and here's what he had to say. Is there going to be a change in your leadership style in the locker room? No, I mean, not, not too much of a change. Um, you know, we just need energy out there on the field, period, especially when you're on the road. The crowd's not going to give you any energy. Um, so I just I take it upon myself to be that guy. Uh, I've never been a hype man. But uh, little John's a Redskin fan, and you know you, you can learn a little bit from him. So I'll be the hype man if they need me to be the hype man. I'll get everybody motivated, and that's what that's what you got to do as a quarterback. You got to motivate guys. You got to inspire them to go play great. And uh, if you feel like the team doesn't have enough energy at the time, you just you create that energy, and that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to get back uh, to balling out, and uh, we just got to get our swagger back. And I think that's what we're going to do. There's no way he has any idea who Little John is, just so you know. No, he has no idea. Just having fun. He he. <laughs> Um, Didn't seriously. crack a smile or anything. Just, you know. <laughs> More on Sunday's game with the Lions a little bit later in the show. Each week here on Redskins Chronicles, we take a look at the team's history through the eyes of the men that played the game. And coming up after a timeout, Amanda Mitchell and Redskins historian Mike Richmond sit down with one of the greats of all time, former Redskins offensive lineman, one of the original hogs, and he is an entertaining guy, Ron Saul. Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Amanda Mitchell, joined by Redskins historian Mike Richmond and the one and only Ron Saul. Ron, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Amanda and Mike. Thank Good you, to Ron. see you all. Nice to see you. You too. I'm glad I'm still alive. <laughs> Ooh. 
And now there's only one Ron Saul, but we understand you're a twin Saul. There's also a Rich and you have an older brother. Talk to me about what it was like growing up as a twin. You know, you oh. both played football. Rich and I were, it, it, it was really something. You know, we, we, I, he, he, I couldn't outdo him and he couldn't outdo me. And, and the competition was just something unbelievable. And we had older brothers and they would always have us fight. And, and neither one of us could give up, you know, because it, it, make, it, it was bad the next day. You know, I beat you, I beat you. So we'd fight, we'd fight to the end. And, and, and I mean, really, really hard. We'd be pounding each other. And then finally, we go, okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, on three, I'll give up if you give up two. And we go one, two, three. Okay, we give. And and a lot of people say, you know, the the good thing about about that was when we got in the NFL, it was easy, because we used to kick each other. But even when we got in college, Duffy Doherty, I was on offense, which was on defense, and Duffy would say, okay, I want the two saws over here, and everybody gather around, and I want you to show you show you how to hit. And Rich and I, would, I couldn't let him win, and he couldn't let me win, and oh man, we would do some real heavy hitting, and that's, that helped, I think, helped get me into the NFL, you know, but uh, it, was a good, it was a good time growing up. We, uh, we were for each other, and, uh, and, you know, whenever we weren't fighting, but uh, it, uh, it was neat. We had uh, a large family. Large family, nine kids in the family. My mother was deaf in one ear, and when her and dad would go to sleep, he'd say, "Well, you want to go to bed or what?" Mom would say, "What?" And we ended up with nine kids. So <laughs> you know, it was it was something. But, now, Ron, uh, our condolences to you on behalf of the entire Redskins family. We know you've just lost Rich. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it was tough. Rich was a Rich was a great 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 friend and brother he he was in LA and I was on the east coast he was on the west but you know we talked to each other every day and uh, and we even even when we were in the NFL I go out there and, and uh, Ray Malavasi was the head coach of the Rams at the time and and uh, Rich says hey look I'm gonna run in here when Ray comes in you know pretend I so Ray would come in he'd sit down and say Rich look uh, we're going to run this play. He says, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you go out, check on the linebacker, and catch this other guy coming across and so forth and so on. I say, won't work, Ray. He goes, what do you mean? What do you mean, Rich? Rich, we can run this play. This is a good play for us. We can run. I say, it's not going to work, coach. He say, Rich, Rich. And then Rich would come out of the sauna or something and go, Ray, and Ray would go, what the heck? You know, he... Uh, it, People couldn't tell us apart. You both were so identical in, in how you approached the game. Two hard-nosed football players, uh, no nonsense. Uh, you know, we grew up in a coal mining town in steel mill, and uh, a lot of tough kids come out of there. I mean, we our high school was unbelievable. In junior high, we were undefeated, unscored upon, and nobody got past our 35-yard line. I mean, how, how <laughs> many high schools got that, you know? Tough group of guys yeah, who called well, it Iron Man football. Yeah, he Talk was. Talk to me about that. I mean, that was football, you know. It was when you were on the field, you kissed your wife or your girlfriend, and you said, honey, I don't know if I'm coming back or not because that's it, the only thing we didn't have was guns. Played one game one time against Bob Lilly. They drained my knee three times. They, I get there, and they drained 100 cc's off my knee. Tape me, shot it up, taped me up, went out and played the first half. Come in at halftime, cut the tape off, drained another 80 cc's off of it, shot me up, taped me up, went out and played the second half. Mm -hmm. We won the game. Come back in, they cut the tape off and drained, I don't know how many cc's that time. And they said, see you tomorrow, Saul. Could you see a guy today doing that? I mean, come on. Some but guys we wanted try, to play. No, huh? Some guys will try, but do you think... You know who would have done it? I'll tell you who would have done it. Number 10. Because mm -hmm. he, that kid, and when I saw what he did in that Seattle game, I said, you know what, there's a kid after my heart. Ron, we want to come back after break and hear more about your Redskins career. So I we'll know. hear more from Ron Saul after the break. 
And we're back, Redskins Chronicles, with Mike Richmond, the Redskins historian, and the one and only Ron Saul. So, Ron, talk to me. We know you were not in Washington for the first few years of your NFL career. What was it like becoming a Redskin? Oh, it was wonderful. You know, and, and let me tell you how it came about, Amanda. Uh, I, I was a starting guard for the Oilers, but we were deep in guards. We, we had a couple good ones that were backing up. So Bum Phillips calls me in and says, look, Ron, uh, there's a team that wants you real bad, a couple teams. He said, uh, Norm Van Brocklin in Atlanta is trying to get you, and so is George Allen in Washington. He says, now, and, and, I, and I'm going to say this, and this is, this is definitely the truth. He calls me and he says, you know what? He said, we're deep in guards and it'd be good for us. But he said, uh, if you don't want to be traded, I won't trade you. He said, if it'll hurt your family, your kids and everything, I won't trade you. I looked at him like, whoa, this ain't, this isn't, this isn't, they usually tap you on the back and say, you now the property up. But that's what he said. And I said, no, Bum, I said, if it's good for the team, uh, he, he said, well, we get three draft choices and we need some help. And uh, he said, we are deep in guards, but he says, it's up to you. I said, well, I will if you trade me to the Washington Redskins. They, uh, they got a wonderful thing going up there and George Allen. And so he said, okay, I'll do it. And so he traded me to the Skins and what a wonderful deal that happened. You know, because I, I really, really enjoyed coming here and uh, the people, the fans, it, it truly is. You know, I, I mean, a lot, a lot of teams say they have great fans. I'll tell you what, I'm not saying the Redskin fans are the best. There's just none better that I know. You know, and, and all the other teams, the Browns and the rest of them, they say their fans are tough. That, that's, that's all good, but you know what? Our fans were immaculate. I mean. They, they just, they were there for you. They supported you in the sleet and the snow and the rain and the hot sun. And they were yelling and cheering. And I mean, teams hated to come in here. The Cowboys couldn't wait to get out. And, and, and anybody who played in old RFK Stadium knew because you, know, you were right down on the field there. I mean, the, the fans were right there and you could, it, it, was, it was phenomenal. And, and what a great, great situation. Redskins Nation has definitely regained its strength. Ron, do you have any stories? Was there a particular fan that ever really stood out to you? Do you have any super fans that you can remember that caught your attention? You know, the group that, that just retired, the Hoggets, uh, they, they were neat. They were, they were really, really neat. Of course, you know, and I got to be one of the original Hogs, and that was what a, what a great experience. And, and I got all the respect in the world for those guys. They, they, they raised over 130 million for Children's Hospital and, uh, and, and I got to meet a lot of them, became friends. And when they would call me and say, hey, Ron, we're gonna do something. Is there any way, you, oh, boy, I'd be there. Because the, the thing that they did that other groups don't do is, that, you know, they, some of them were in real estate, some of them accountants. But the good thing about it is wherever they went, they paid their own way, they bought their own food, everything else, every nickel that they got, whether they were in North Carolina doing a gig or, or South Carolina, whatever, you know, because a lot of up and down the coast, they were still kind of Redskin fans. And, and of course, with us winning, that made the Hall gets even better. But, you know, they, they just, they would pay their own way. Every nickel they made went to Children's Hospital. And a charity like that, I'm all for them. I'm all for. Speaking of the uh, the hogs, uh, everybody knows that Joe Bugle coined the nickname, but what was the thinking behind it? You know, Joe Joe called us in and uh, he said, you know what guys, he says, uh, I'm getting tired of defenses, defenses line. You know, you got the purple gang, the, the doomsday defense, the fearsome foursome, the Disty, the Looney Tunes, the boom, 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 he's going on and on, he goes, Nobody's ever named an offense. Why? He says, you know what? He says, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna be known as the hogs. We're gonna ride, where the cream rises to the top. And you know what? We're gonna take this team to the Super Bowl. We're gonna be known as the hogs. We're gonna take it to the Super Bowl. 
And to become a hog, you had to hit a guy and you had to, you had to pancake him and his feet go up in the air. His helmet hit the back of the ground and everything else. So the first year in 81, I got it, Jacoby got two of them, and, uh, and Grimmy got it. So we, us three hogs. Then we go to training camp in 82. And he goes, Nate, come here, take this picture. And now you may have seen the hog picture. I want you to take this picture because these guys are going to be a main factor in us going to the Super Bowl and winning it this year. I said, oh, God, I can't wait to go home now you're talking and tell to my wife. There Guess what, know. honey? I'm a hog. <laughs> She's going to say, okay, what's new? You know, I mean, golly, you know, I said, gee whiz, what a name for a group. But you know what, it caught on, it was great. And of course we had the diesel, John Riggins, I mean, he was just unbelievable. The guy was uh, phenomenal and, and we would, we'd get in the games and, and there'd be two and a half minutes left to go and they'd say, we're going to take it down the field and we're going to uh, score a touchdown, we're going to win the game. And Ron, you were a six year Redskin. But in those six years, what was the best year? The best year? Mm -hmm. uh, 79, I, uh, I made the Pro Bowl, you know. And uh, that was the only time I didn't get hurt. But you had a few more years in Washington, and you went out with a bang in 1982 with a Super Bowl ring. Talk to me about that. You know, I was very fortunate. I, I got my knee hurt again, and they operated on me right, right there. In, at the end of training camp, and, and uh, of course I I would have made the team, so they they kept me on the team and uh, IR the way it was IR, and then uh, uh, the neat thing was getting to go to the Super Bowl. There's so many players are playing in the NFL that are really good players that never really got the opportunity, but to be to be a world champion. And to know that I was a little part of that, you know, to because I would have been there. Even though you were on IR, how did you step up as a leader? Because in 1982, you were the oldest member of yeah. the Redskins. Mm -hmm. Yep, I burped and bottle fed a lot of those young, young uh, football players. Grimm and Bostic and Jacoby. And Joe Gibbs once said to me, he says, Ron, I wish I would have got you about three years earlier, you know, because he said it, it, it was uh, fun, fun being with you on that. I'll never forget whenever I got traded here, George Allen, I, I came in and it's like the last exhibition game was against Kansas City. So we're going to fly out the next day. Well, Stan Levine was a doctor and I'll never forget, he, he come in and he checked my knees and he started moving them left and right. And he goes, goodness. He said, uh, you stay right here. He said, George, send him back to Houston. His knees are gone. I'd already had five operations in Houston. He said, send him back to Houston. Oh, really? So he come over to me and he says, hey, Ron, how do you feel? I said, I'm, I'm fine. He says, well, he can go tonight, Stan. Stan went, oh, like this, you know. Hey, it was neat. It was real, real neat to be in Washington. It was neat to know Stan Levine, George Allen, Joe Gibbs. Got to play for three Hall of Fame head coaches in, in my career, you know. People come up and they'll say, you aren't that good, Saul. And I say, I know, I, but I did fool three Hall of Fame head coaches, so I got that going for me. But anyway, But that you're was looking it. great. Seven knee operations later. We really appreciate you <laughs> taking the time with us today, Ron. We'll see what the Redskins will do this week when Redskins Chronicles return. Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael. Redskins and Lions, 1 o'clock kickoff Sunday at FedEx Field. And we've heard it all week long. The Lions have never beaten the Redskins in the nation's capital. Detroit coming off a tough 25-21 loss in Arizona last week. Detroit has some game breakers for sure. Calvin Johnson, one of the best receivers of the National Football League. Long and lean, great athletic ability. He's already had a record-breaking career, and this year he's got two touchdowns, including a reception of 72 yards. Quarterback Matt Stafford is strong-armed but erratic. The addition of Reggie Bush to the offense has added a new dimension this year, though he hurt his knee last time out against Arizona. Defensively, the strength is up front, but the unpredictable Indomitian Sioux has had several issues and over the years has been fined 
hundreds of thousands of dollars. The Redskins looking for a win against Detroit. Here's some thoughts from Mike Shannon. Well, I guarantee you there's a greater sense of urgency right now for us to eliminate mistakes. You know, that's very ob obvious. We've got a couple different styles of offense that we didn't fare very well with, and uh, we plan on getting much better. So we're going against the top 10 offense this week. They're doing a great job scoring points, great job throwing the ball, preventing sacks, and we're going to have to play one of our better games. And I told our guys we can't do anything about the last two weeks, but we can have a much better practice today, which we did. So it's a first step, hopefully going the right direction. Redskins head coach Mike Shanahan, the Redskins and Lions kick it off 1 o'clock Sunday at FedEx Field. Thank you so much for watching Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael. We'll see you here next week.